mate gave me a couple of nifty looking bits of packing material. Sort of like polystyrene, but more dense, and it was black, and not so bubbly. So hopefully no more of that heinous screech when I'm cutting it up. So let's see what we can do with it. Some grouting sand and kills primer mixed together and then daubed onto the surfaces with a big fat brush. It starts to thicken pretty quickly, and initially you can add water to thin it out, but it can stop the mixture from giving you the really craggy concrete look. And also, when it dries, it can start to crack, so it's best to top it up with more Kills Primer to maintain that right consistency. I was pondering cutting some bunker-like machine gun slots, but I liked the big dense walls, so I decided to create a gantry where people can stand to peek over the wall, stay in cover, and shoot at the enemy from on high. I grabbed a piece from the Emma's townhouse, and it fit absolutely perfectly between the walls once I snipped off the connective tabs. I'll take this as a sign that I'm on the right track. It fits so well, I could actually just insert it and let go, and it stays in place. I grabbed the little bald sword dude that came free with an army painter paint set, so I could eyeball the right height to set it at, and weirdly enough, by adding a couple of pipes from my big old bag of pipes underneath it, they hold it up at pretty much the spot on perfect height. Now. The last time I was in the supermarket, there was a bunch of clearance kids lawn sports stuff, and I saw these rackets, and then saw they might make awesome ladders. I bought a couple of them, and grabbed the wire cutters, and started extracting a single line. Then, with my utility knife, I trimmed off the sides to make them smooth, and they actually look pretty good. Okay. Time for a second coat of the Kills Primer and Grouting Sand, and after I mixed it up, I dabbed it on again, and this really made it look nice and lumpy and concrete-like. While this dries, let's develop that platform. First up, snipping off the rest of the tabs, and I applied the knife to even the stubs out. Then, I cut out some sections of wire mesh, added a thin layer of superglue on the plastic, and then placed the mesh on top and then added a weight to keep it pressed down while it dries. Once dry, it's easy to just get the scissors and trim it down to the right size. So also, I had bought a few Dino Attack Nerf guns and turned an internal part of the gun into some fun sci-fi generators in a previous video, and I therefore had a bunch of leftover other parts that I want to play with on this project. There are these framing supports and the plunger handle that you yanked on to cock the pistol. These look good for some sort of dense comms antenna, a scanner, or something like that. Basically, generic sci-fi-ness that adorns these outposts. Okay, time to prime everything. Cocktail sticks. Stabbed in some IKEA packing gave me something to drop the pipes and such onto so I could blast them all over in one go. Now. I had actually bought a packet of Army Painter barbed wire, but decided in the end to have a go and make my own. So I snagged 30 yards of Hildy and Joe 26 gauge silver plated copper wire from my local craft store. I cut a nice length and folded it in half around the chair leg, folding over the other ends a couple of times and this lets you insert them into a drill and give the chuck something to really tighten to and hold on to. Then I just turned it on, applied a little tension, and twirled them up before winding the finished strand around a marker pen to get the nice coiled barbed wire look. Okay, it looks just like the Army Painter professionally produced stuff. Now, on to dry brushing. I broke out the Army Painter Mithril Silver and started applying it to all the edges with lighter touches on the main surfaces. To secure the barbed wire and keep it in place, I took the pointy end of several bamboo barbecue skewers and after stabbing them into the IKEA packing stuff to create a hole, then I reversed them and inserted the other end in so I could paint them all over with the silver. While all this dries, a pour of Mod Podge and black and white acrylic all stirred up and then with the big fat brush I dabbed it all over the terrain and then once it was dry I added a little bit of white 
and stirred it up and started dry brushing along all the edges and lightly across the main expanses of the walls to highlight some of the bigger lumps. I added a little more white acrylic and focused more on the edges and then even more white and some very light dry brush touches on just the corner. So I ended up with a couple of really solid looking concrete structures. The dry brushing is great on the chunks of grout and sand, really livens it up. Okay, time for assembly. The hot glue gun to attach the pipes to the platform and a little bit of super glue around it to strengthen the join and make it look more like a weld. There were some screw slots jutting out from the inside of the Dino Assault pieces and it stopped it laying flush. So with the wire cutters, I trimmed them down so I could glue them directly to the exterior surfaces of the terrain pieces. Then it's adding the catwalk and ladder into place, slotting the skewers into position and then slipping the barbed wire onto them. A dab of super glue here and there helped lock them in place and then by watering down some black acrylic I gave them a light wash so they didn't look so new and shiny. And I also added this wash around where the exterior pieces meet the concrete. Last couple of accents. Inserting a mechanical pencil into the walls to get a small hole and then by pressing a ballpoint pen into that same hole it created a nice crater to surround the deeper penetrations. It's already black in there so I don't need to paint it like I had to with the white styrofoam material so I just needed to add some touches of grey to make all of these bullet holes pop. And lastly, a few inspirational posters added to the walls to keep the morale up. And then a spritz of varnish from every angle to seal everything in. So here we have a couple of hardened outposts with dense walls. They provide an elevated position to lay down fire on the land before them. They also have dense broadcast arrays with a stocky antenna that allows Imperial forces to upload, download or just make contact with other forces on planet or in orbit. To prevent rear attacks, a series of metal stakes string barbed wire across the open back end of the outposts, funneling attackers into a single, highly defensible access point.